This is the Rich Dad Radio Show. The good news and bad news about money. Here's Robert Kiyosaki. Hello, hello, hello. This is Robert Kiyosaki. The good news and bad news about money. And as you may know, we broadcast from beautiful old town Scottsdale, Arizona. It's either heaven or hell, and right now it is pure heaven. So we have a very important program for you today. It's a, it's a, it's you know, it's a program that every entrepreneur or a skill every entrepreneur needs to know. Because if you don't know this, you're not going to be an entrepreneur. So the number one skill of an entrepreneur is how do you raise capital? I mean, every week I get these phone calls from people and they want me to lend them money to start this and start that. So I'm going to give you a case study of three stories of three capital raises because that's all entrepreneurs do. And if you can't raise capital, you're not an entrepreneur. So the first one was the son of a friend. And she says, would you please talk to my son? He needs help. He needs money. So I talked to the guy and I said, he, he's, I want to borrow three, I want to raise $350,000. That's, you know, I said, so what's it for? He says, because I'm going to lose my job. <laughs> and I said, well, that's a good reason. You know, I'm going to give you a $350,000. So you can pay the bills. He goes, no, no, no. Then, then I'm going to find a product. And I'm going to develop it. And I went, well, for some reason there was no money for it. So the second entrepreneur calls up. He says, I need 400 K for 10 days. And then I'll send you the prospectus and all. I'm, I'm going, I need a million. I said, okay, you'll get the 400 K in 10 days. There was no questions that second on that was the second entrepreneur. And the third entrepreneur is another friend of ours. And we have a standing order with him. His name is Kenny. Every deal he does, he has to reserve us a slot for a quarter million. And then I complain is he, he doesn't get me more of his deals. So there's three different types of capital raises. And so today we're going to be talking about how does an entrepreneur raise capital? And we have a mega star on this subject today. Any comments, Kim? Well, I'm excited because our, our guest today is the famous Damon John, and if anybody who's ever watched Shark Tank knows Damon very well. He's the uh, founder and CEO of FUBU, which is a, a heck of a clothing company, and he's the star of ABC's Shark Tank. And he sees entrepreneurs pitching deals all day long. So if you want to talk to somebody about how to raise capital, how to make a good pitch, how to become a successful entrepreneur from nothing, Damon's, Damon's your guy. So we're going to have two sessions with Damon. And then on the third session, I'm going to tell you who these three guys raising capital from me were and why I said no to one automatic yes to another. And then have a standing order for money. You know, anytime he needs money, he doesn't even have to ask the money is there for him. So that's the most important subject for an entrepreneur. If how do you raise capital? So Damon, thanks once again for being on the rich dad program. And thanks for being such a great, great teacher. You know, you and I were talking. Oh, thank you. You and I were talking before we got on the air about how <laughs> some of these guys come up on Shark Tank and they said, "Yeah, I want a million dollars. I'll give you two percent." And I said, "Have you got a product?" No. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you said, "How have I failed you?" You know, I'm, I'm I'm teaching everybody on Shark Tank, and and you're you're out of line on on your valuations. So anyway. Thanks for being a great teacher. And that's why at Rich Dad, you know, that we love teaching people. So welcome to the program, Damon. Uh, thank you for having me as always. Thank you both. Welcome, welcome. So um, so if somebody doesn't know you, but I don't know who wouldn't know you, but in case they don't, can you just give us a little bit of your background, how you got started and how you got into FUBU and, and all of that? Because I know it was not a road paved with roses. Yeah, you know, um, I got in FUBU, uh, you know, I felt that there was a void in the market that wasn't being addressed, that, uh, you know, kids that love hip-hop just weren't respected. You know, uh, most of the designers at that time were saying, well, we don't want kids who, hip-hop kids or African-Americans or any city kids or rappers, whatever you want to call it at the time, we don't want them wearing our clothes. So I said, who's ever going to really support and love the, the people that love this culture as much as I do? I came up with a brand name, uh, FUBU for a flyer, but I didn't have any money. And I, I, I made a couple of hats look very much like ski caps at the time, 1989. And I stood in the corner and I started selling them. I, um, I ran out of capital three, 
separate times and closed the business three separate times from 89 to 92, but it was taking affordable steps. I was running out of $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, but every single time I was running out of capital, I was learning a valuable lesson of how I wasn't utilizing the tool of money the proper way. Um, but I also realized that I had a passion and love for this business and it kept calling me back. Um, because a couple of pastors served to teach us by the time that I would have sold, people kept saying, I'm looking for you. Where are you? Why aren't you doing this again? And I, I, um, I just kept opening the business again. So after the third time I closed it, the fourth time I opened the business back up in 92. I brought some friends in with me and around, uh, you know, I still used the power broke and didn't have any money, but I kept, uh, you know, putting, I used, the same 10 t-shirts i put them on every video that, that i could go to i would take them back and, and put them on another rapper then put it on another dancer and take them back and right around 96 97 and i'm giving you of course a very short version of this um i was going to a trade show uh and i would write three hundred thousand dollars in orders because i built up this influence of my product being seen on so many different videos then I had to find out. Um, then I did, you know, mortgage my home and I turned my home into a factory. I started making the clothes. I ran out of that capital because I did not have financial intelligence at the time. Mm-hmm. Okay, and the newspaper and Samsung textile division would come in and start uh, manufacturing and distributing my clothes. I still would make a lot of financial mistakes in between that time, but I was also gaining financial intelligence. And just like an interview that I saw with Robert, I used my teachers as as uh, my accountants, my attorneys, and uh, they became my teachers that I started to gain financial intelligence over the course of that time. And Fubu became a global brand, um, and now I'm a Shark Tank. And so, and, and so you're not saying you have an MBA from Harvard, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, the, only, the only notable thing I did in school was get left back once. <laughs> so, uh, pretty much it. And that's that's a uh, that's a great experience, you know. Like uh, when people say, "How did I get started?" I said, "I success nearly killed me because I started with a nylon and Velcro surfer wallet business in the '70s, and I knew I was going to fail, but I didn't realize I was going to fail because I was successful. When the product took off, I couldn't just like you, I couldn't raise enough capital to finance inventory, and you haven't lived." until you can't finance inventory and you have orders sitting in front of you. Was that a similar experience for you? About financing inventory? I, I just couldn't keep up with the inventory and I kept borrowing money to yeah. put inventory into the marketplace. And it just got yeah. grew into, uh, I think back in the seventies, I was almost a million two in debt trying to finance inventory for a global, a global product called nylon and Velcro surfer wallets. So success brought me yeah. down. Yeah, that's a that's a great problem to have, but it is truly a problem. Thank God that at that time uh, when I was growing, I had uh, I had a Samsung in back of me, but um, prior to that, I didn't understand what maybe factoring was or a uh, credit line for the business because I didn't build credit for the business. I didn't even understand that you could build credit for the business, and I. Definitely didn't do, I didn't, well, even if I did a friends and family raise, it wouldn't have worked because all my friends and family were broke. So. <laughs> <laughs> but the two things that I see similar, very similar to, to you, Damon and Robert, is number one is you never, you never stopped learning and you learned from all of these mistakes along the way and you, and you just kept going. Absolutely, and I'm still learning. I um, mean, you know, I think one yeah. of the best things about being on Shark Tank is that I, I learn from. I don't learn anything from the other sharks because they don't know anything. But <laughs> I do learn from the. <laughs> I, learn, I learn from the entrepreneurs that come up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's exciting. <laughs> and, and during the, uh, before we came on the air, I was commending Damon for being such a passionate teacher. You know, when, when one guy stood up in front of you, and I don't know, his valuation was he wanted to raise a million dollars and give you ten percent and. There was nothing there. And he said, you know, how have I failed you guys? You know, you were visibly and emotionally upset because these guys are in Looney Tunes lands, valuating a business, wanting, a, I, don't, I don't forget the dollar amount, but going to give you no percentage on it. And they didn't even have a business there yet. I mean, 
Would you mind going into what goes through your mind when you see somebody there who's so out of touch with the world of entrepreneurship and capital raising? Yeah, I, I think that the world, they, uh, you know, they're out of touch with it and they don't understand that if they don't have any level of business or no level of sales and they don't know who their customer is because, you know, um, you know, by the time I went for my capital raise, um, I knew who my customer was. I knew their age. I knew the price they would pay. They would pay 79 for this, but not 99 for this. I realized that I, first as a, as a designer, I had 10 colors of t-shirts. And after having a small amount of sales, I'm not talking about major sales. And after selling for quite some time, I realized that 60% of the color that you would always sell in the back of the industry would be black. 20% would be white. So I, I only needed four colors, you know, black, white, blue, and maybe one other mixture. I, I tried to put out 10 logos. I realized I only bought two. I tried to put out seven sizes. They only wanted double X. And I knew who my customer was, customer was, the size, the color, the amount they would pay. And when people go out and they want raises and then they don't know who their customer is, they don't have any sales, they don't have anything, well, you you don't know your customer is, and I certainly don't know. You you have the blind leading the blind, first of all. Uh, right. Second of all, why do you need all that capital? You know, because the first couple of years in Shark Tank, we would give people the money they asked for, and then we'd find out they would put up a $50,000 website when the only need it was uh, $2,000 Facebook Yeah. Page. Oh, we see that and all the time. Yep. Yep. Hey, there was, yeah, of course. there they, was, there was those, yeah. th those three Asian women, were I think they were Chinese, they were Harvard or Stanford and all this stuff. And he said, well, let's say they were raising 300,000, what's 300,000 for us? Our salaries. <laughs> No. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, saw, I saw. always a runaway. I saw <laughs> Cuban go <going> nuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and I'm curious. I'm just curious because because you get the mix. You get mix of people that come from MBA school, and then you get the street smart guys. Um, is there a, do you, is there a big difference in who you invest with? Well, first of all, I always invest in the person, but yes. You know, you know the the mix is it, it, the NBA guys are fine and girls are fine, but I'll invest in them if they have experience. Meaning, they have that MBA, but they decided to start something themselves from scratch, and they have both the real life experience and the book experience. But however, I usually invest more in people that have just real life experience. Um, and they've been kicked down and beat up for a lot of a lot of time, and they failed a bunch of times, and now they know all the things they shouldn't do and the things they should do. Okay, so well, we have to go to break, but you have a new book out. It's called Power Shift: How to Transform Any Situation, Close Any Deal, and Achieve Any Outcomes. And trans, and you know, it's really about the person. What I think you're saying is what we say here at Rich Dad: You change yourself, you change the world. But you don't change yourself, Absolutely. the world. The world's going to pound the you know what out of you, and uh, 100%. that's a big thing I look for is a little thing called humility, you know. And I've I've watched you guys on Shark Tank. You have some real SOBs up there, man. Arrogant, 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 arrogant people, and then you have some people that are sobbing and crying. You know, my mother's dying. My kids are starving. And I got to I got to make this work. And it's such an interesting program, just because, as you say, we invest in people. We come back when I find out more what you look for when you're raising capital from a, for, an, from an entre, for an entrepreneur. We'll be right back. Hello, 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 hello. Robert Kiyosaki. We're back at the Rich Dad Radio Show, and you can listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime, anywhere on iTunes or Andrew, Android and YouTube. And please, when you watch this program or view this program or listen to this program, please leave us a review, you know, give us a comment because we want to know what you guys think. And of course, as we say all the time, we archive all of our <clears throat> interviews for one reason. It's because we're educators. We, have, we don't sell product or services. We don't tell you what to invest in. And um, we archive that so you can listen to this program again because we're educators. You listen to this program one more time, you'll be twice as smart if you listen to it just once. But more importantly, just go to richdadradio.com, listen to this program, and then have friends, family, and especially business partners listen to this again because there might be some things you want to tell your idiot business partner that you can't, can't say that maybe we can say for you. 
But anyway, repetition is how we loan. So all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. And if you have any questions, you can ask Rich Dad on social media, and we'll do our best to answer them. So our guest today is the infinite, infamous, very successful, but most importantly, a great guy, very big-hearted human being, really, really doing his best to educate and support entrepreneurs developing, you know, the great dream of all entrepreneurs is not go broke. I mean, make some money. <laughs> but I, I, I've, lost, I've lost it many times, as Kim knows. Any comments, Kim? Well, uh, you know, we're talking about entrepreneurship. We're talking about raising capital. And if there is su e ever such a thing as a shortcut to entrepreneurship, um, I think it's to find great mentors who are doing what it is you want to do. And we talk about real teachers and fake teachers, and we have a real, real teacher and a real mentor to entrepreneurship in, in Damon John. And uh, if you ever watch Shark Tank, what a great program to see what works, what doesn't work, and also to get I, I get a lot of ideas from watching that show. Wow, look at they! How did they do that? And look at this! And, th and there's so much to learn. And um, what I love about Damon is he is a lifelong learner, as we are here at, at Rich Dad. And so a great and a great human being. Yes, you great got a human being. huge heart, Damon, and you're you're doing such great work to empower people in the world of entrepreneurship. So we we applaud you for that. Well, thank you so much. Thank so you. Damon, you, thank have a, you so have a, much. It's a favor to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. You have a brand new book out called Power Shift how to transform any situation, yes. close any deal, and achieve any outcome. Which you might think if you must explain what the book's about, but more importantly, why you wrote it. Yeah, so my other books were The Power Broke and uh, Rise and Grind. And what I try to do is, because I'm on the road so much, and just like you, I get asked questions on social media and in person thousands of times. And what I realized uh, out of the other two books is that many people were asking me about exactly this topic. Negotiation, how do you raise capital? How do you get vendors? How do you get good staff? Blah, 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 all came down to negotiation. And many people were just extremely transactional. They, they thought the negotiation really came when you sat on the other side of the table from somebody and you had to either hammer them or make such a great, beautiful offer. And there's three phases to negotiation. Um, the number one phase is first of all, you have to build influence. Number two is the negotiation. And number three is that where the value in uh, a relationship comes from is not the first deal. It's all the deals you do afterwards. And if you look at the three subjects prior that you were going to talk about, um, and I have no idea um, how those people work out with you, but it sound like one asked for, you know, some money and they had no proof of concept or no 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 sales or no influence that they have done this before and they were executed properly. Number two, sounded like some may have had a way to collateralize their situation and or protect the, uh, your investment. And number three, sound like somebody who had built a vast amount of influence with you and you or had already done deals with them and that relationship will now prosper in many, many ways because they built a level of trust in you. So, you know, when, when you look at it, this, people don't realize it, don't be transactional. And so somebody may say, well, you know, what if I'm in the elevator with Kim or Robert and uh, I only have 90 seconds, how do I build influence with them? Right? So well, the, how do you know if the influence will need to be built right there? When Kim and Robert leave the elevator, and if they do have some level of interest, they're going to Google your name. Now they're going to go online. And what are they going to see on there? What influence have you built there throughout the course of your time of creating a reputation? Are they going to see you uh, driving around in fancy cars and have a lot of jewelry around you? Or are they going to see that, you know, you know, you're a certain type of person? You know, your reputation is like driving down the street. Your reputation is skyscrapers. We can see it from a mile away. Right? So, so you build an influence. Then you go into the negotiation. Uh, and what is in it for the person you're negotiating with? Too many people are self-serving and they don't understand that Robert and Kim have their own damn problems. Don't come to me and tell me your problems. I mean, there's the old <laughs> thing. Don't tell people your problems. 20% of the people don't care. The other 80% are really happy that you have them. Right? So, so come, yeah. so come I am. to the table with the value. <laughs> come to the table with the value you can add. And then after that, how do you negotiate a great deal where you create a relationship where for the many, many years and years after that, it's beneficial. But the most important negotiation you have to have is with yourself prior to ever 
walking up to a table. You Amen. Know, are you worth it? Why is the value? You know what I mean? Why are you a value? And, uh, and, and that's really what it is. And I have it there 12 subjects, everybody from Chris Jenner to Mark Cuban to people who may not have heard of my guys who created a brand called Bombas Box. Came on Shark Tank. They're the number one invested company on Shark Tank. They had zero dollars in the way that they started out is. Um, they went into their database of all the people they've ever emailed in their entire life. They realized they had 40,000 people in their database. They sent out an email to everybody and said, hey, we're creating a company that makes socks. And every time we buy, uh, sell a pair of socks, we give care away the homeless. Would you like to be part of this? Purchase any. 30% of the people wrote back, hey, hey, buddy, I don't really know you that well. Don't ever send me an email ever again. Another 30% wrote, ah, I'm interested, tell me some information. Another 30%, oh, you know, 33 and a half, whatever, wrote back, I would love to. And that's how it started with zero capital. So anyway, that's, that's basically what the book is about. And I go through the defining things that uh, all these subjects and all these people that I'm highlighting in the book have in common and what I see works out in the market. That's a, a very important book. You guys, the book is called Power Shift. Get it because what Damon yeah. is sharing with you is a thing called wisdom, not textbook knowledge. And so, um, you know, Damon used a couple of words in there that everybody should listen to, which are important. It's transactional, and many people are just transactional. I mean, you know, slam, bam, thank you, ma'am, got the money, I'm out of here. And other people are there to build a relationship. That's the big difference. Like, I, I get, we, when uh, we come back on the third section, we're going to talk about the first guy just raised the money. I didn't even know who he was. 350000 I think. The other guy needs his shortfall of four hundred k. Is it in 10 days? He's got the money. You know, I'm not, I don't have no worry about him. And then we have the third guy, which is Kenny. We have a standing order to place money with him because we always make more money with Kenny. And so that's, the, that's what um, Damon is talking about. So, Damon, could you give us an example? A quick, quick examples of somebody just by looking at the person, it was either yes and other people no. The question is, what are you looking for? What did a, and a specific without mentioning names as possible, what said yes and why did you say no? What what turned you off on the deal? Well, the people I generally say no to are people that um, they may have a proof of concept or anything else, but however, they're 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 going off of uh, hypothetical hypothetical theories on why they're going to be successful. Mm-hmm. Uh, number one, the number one thing that you can always say when you walk into a room, to somebody to turn them off is if I, this is a fifty billion dollar market, and if I only get one percent yes. of the market, <laughs> all the time. Yes. Oh, that drives that time. drives Mark yeah. Cuban yeah. nuts. <laughs> drives me crazy. <laughs> Why, yeah, well, why, I, why well, is that? Let me ask you guys. I sit there. I said, well, what is that? You know, Cuban just comes out of his chair. <laughs> why does it drive I, him I crazy? Say, well, I mean, the, that guy's an idiot. I, but. Used say, well, the, I used to say, well, the bankruptcy market is probably about $50 billion. <laughs> so you're going to get, get a bigger percentage of that. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's, it's like... One hundred percent of the people on earth drink water, so I'm going to get one percent of that. You know, is that... What... What what is it that drives you guys nuts about that? Well, I'm not surprised if I would hear that when you think you're joking about it, but people really say that you know that at that point they're they're not working off of facts. You know that uh, they are very hypothetical. And I, listen, I, I don't I'm I'm not going to be mad at anybody who has a dream and and who is uh, you know a little enthusiastic. I mean, everybody on this on this uh, radio show right now was enthusiastic about something, but. We found a way to put those facts together with the enthusiasm that we had. So, so, so number one, that's that one thing you know, that people do wrong. Number two is when people think they can buy themselves into the market and they go, well, you know, um, I'm not selling that much right now. I have a bunch of inventory. and But, yeah, yeah, but you know what? I need, need, need $200,000 to take out ads. Well, if you need $200,000 to take out ads and you're looking at um, your advertising, being an argument, take uh, you know five percent of, or you know five percent of your entire budget. Well, then now you need to sell that much more of the product to come back with the money we invested in. And if you already got a garage full of junk, now you're just going to be advertising a bunch of junk. There's a problem with your process. Money <laughs> often highlights your weaknesses. 
you have bad sales or you have a bad product or you have bad distribution or the product is not priced right. Money often highlights your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So don't Good tell point. me you have a bunch of inventory and you can't sell it. <laughs> um, you know, so those are a couple of things. And then, of course, it's the people who've never been in the business before and they're assuming that it's just for the business and they're going to be a great partner, but you've never made any mistakes. And when you, if you give me this hockey stick theory of how the business is going to grow, well, that means that my daughter uh, at, at this level is keeping her spinner. She's three, but she's going to be seven feet tall by the time she's five because <laughs> it's just a hockey stick. You know what I mean? And it's unrealistic, <laughs> you know? So those are a lot of things though, <laughs> that, that are red flags. And there could be many, many more, of course. But uh, more importantly, the reason why we do invest is when we see people who have, uh, take an actual step, they have done their homework, they have failed a bunch of times, and or they have done it and scaled at a very small uh, and steady rate because they took affordable steps. So have you had any uh, people you've invested in and the, the business failed, so you lost your money? Have you, have, have you had that happen? Uh, yes, I have had. I probably have lost about... Uh, out of 10 um, of the Shark Tank investments um, in my real, uh, my, my life outside of Shark Tank, I've probably lost uh, four out of 10. Um, and the others, I can't say were rock stars, but some have um, been okay. And some of them, some have been rock stars. Um, but yes, I, we have it. I try not to talk about the entrepreneurs, uh, unfortunately, um, because I realize my voice holds a lot of weight and sometimes it haunts them throughout their life mm. because if you Google their name, you hear that I told you how they lost everything when they're going for another job, opening another company. It could affect them, but I have absolutely lost. Yeah. Have you Thanks. learned a lot okay. from the loss? I have. I have learned a lot of the loss. I've learned, uh, and it reinforces every single thing that I've written in my book and I say today, uh, or we were just talking about. I learned that, you know, yeah, this person hadn't put in the work or they, they, they didn't know how to successfully uh, acquire resources at a, a, a very reasonable price, but they haven't taken small steps to figure it out. And, you know, true entrepreneurs, we act and learn, and then we repeat a little more wisely. Um, and sometimes they were in the business for the wrong reason. Sometimes people were in the business, uh, they wanted to see, uh, they want to have this business, not because really they wanted the business. They want to see their name and lights and mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. Well, then maybe you should be a, a singer or a dancer or a poet or <laughs> yeah, something like that's, that. that uh, that's a, that's a really great point. Is that one of your keys, um, for success is really what's the purpose behind your business? Yeah, you know, what's your why? Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I've often also seen, I've also seen, uh, entrepreneurs who've had a, certain level of success. Uh, but, you know, like right now, many people listening to us, uh, you know, hopefully everybody listening to us is really wealthy and they're doing really well. But <laughs> then when somebody says, uh, I want a million dollars, all right, well, start a, and they start a business. Well, what do you do when you get the million dollars? Yeah. Why do you want the million dollars? Will you buy one Bugatti? <laughs> will you buy <laughs> office furniture? Will you buy, <laughs> yeah. Will you buy a string of homes that are income producing? Will you live off uh, thirty thousand dollars a year for ten years, and go to Bali and uh, you know uh, make canoes out of trees. <laughs> I mean, what, what when I find people don't have a why for the purpose that they're doing it, and when they do receive money, just like a lot of winners and athletes, or sixty five percent of them are bankrupt three years yes. after winning the lotto or leaving the league. If you don't have a purpose for your why, for whether your product or for the money or anything else. You, you tend to fall on your face. Right, right. Because we, we also say, too, that, you know, if, if you'd have the mindset of a, a poor person giving them money to be an entrepreneur, they've still got that poor person's mindset. Um, so they've oh, got yeah. they to take those to. small steps and make those mistakes and, and build it from the ground up. 100%. Uh, one, one last question because we're coming out of time. But, you know, at, let's say you cut a deal. The guy wants $100,000 and you get 10% of the business. How many times is the um, agreement killed in due diligence when you actually look into things? How often does that happen? You know, it's just, it sounds good at in front, but when you dig, you know, you go, you go into it, things do not check out. How often does that happen? You just, okay, I'm, I'm out of the deal after you sort of agreed to the deal. 
that happens about 50%. And sometimes things do check out, but mm-hmm. in the all reality, as you know, listen, I'm human. We're all human. Um, sometimes things uh, don't check out. But sometimes I just realize after talking to the person that I don't like them. <laughs> that's, that's number one in my book. If I don't like them or I don't trust them, forget it. <laughs> I, I, saw, I, just don't, yeah. I just don't like them. Or, yep. you know what? Maybe they don't like me. Yeah. And that's okay as well. But, you know, a business is, or any relationship is bound to fail if we don't have communication or we don't like each other. I love partners who are problem-solving partners. I love partners who call me and say, hey, David, you know what? We have a problem for our business. I've tried these eight things to try to solve this, but I haven't been able to. i got two more uh, things I think we should do. I'm going to try them. And you know what? We communicate on how to do this, and we both learn from it. And, uh, you know, we, we live our fail from that. But if I have a partner that I don't want to pick up the phone to call, I don't like the person, well, then if we have 10 problems, I'm only going to talk to that person one time. Amen. And over the course of the investment, I'm just not going to be into it. And I don't need to have that communication. I really don't because, because you know what? When I send my money over to Tesla or Shopify or Amazon, Jeff Bezos does not call me with a damn problem. <laughs> I just sit at home and I get my check. So if I'm going to do the business with somebody, I better like them and we better learn from this business to make it sm- make me smarter for my everyday life and yeah. my new businesses as well. That's a great, that's, great, great statement. And the one last thing I saw, I, I saw all you guys, there was this one guy up there, I won't say the product. The guy was pretty sharp. He was talking about his product and all this, and you guys are all interested in all this. He was talking about all his sales, yada, 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 yada. And then somebody found out he was talking about an existing business, but you guys weren't, he, he didn't include the business in the transaction. And when you guys found out he was deceiving you on national television, you know, things, well, it's only the product. My business is not to be touched. Holy mackerel. I mean, I, I, this guy was so. Well, then you're, then you're, that's, that's the trust is broken right there. Why would you want to do business with somebody? Slime ball, trust? you know, yeah. but I, but then I, he was a pretty rich guy and I, I see his product on TV now, kind of an infomercial style, but this, this guy was, he was so slippery. You know, and if, without your experience, you probably would have never picked up on it. But he wasn't selling the business; he was selling the rights to a product. You know? Yeah, he he and, and, and surprisingly enough, he managed to slip through the producer's hands. Uh, you know, to get even to the stage. You know, and you know, and, and that's the only time. You know, I try to be a gentleman um, to most people, and um, that's the only time you'll see me pissed off. <laughs> you know, listen, here, here's how difficult it is to get on a shark tank. There's 40,000 people apply. The producers see 1,000 people. The sharks see 200 and only 94 make the air. Well, you might as well go for a lot. Wow, out of 40. But if, oh. if you're doing that, I don't want to see your hat in your hand yeah. and you have 2 or $5 million in the bank because the 94 people that stand on the carpet, I believe, if you have that type of valuation and or money and you're being slippery, you just took the opportunity away yes. for maybe some of your listeners right now who busted their ass for seven, eight, nine, ten years. They risked everything they have and now they're poised to scale and they're a hardworking family and you just took that opportunity away from somebody who truly needed the capital and the guidance. And you did it because you're selfish. So just doing that alone shows that you're just a selfish person. And I'm going to shred you if I can. And sometimes <laughs> one or two or five will slip through the cracks. But it pisses me off. Yep, yep. And rightfully hey, so. So once again, the book is called Power Shift. Damon John, I'll tell you guys, it's most important. Thank if you're going to, so if much. you're going to, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you've got to get this book. You got to read from a real entrepreneur, not a Harvard MBA. And you know, there's so much to learn. And if you're not willing to read a book, you better not get in this business because we have to study constantly. Right, Kim? Yes, we do. And I can't wait to read the book and it's going to be out March 10th. Uh, we'll be looking for it and March. congratulations. Is, is that right? March 10th? 
Damon. Mark said, and and um, and I think this is the first time I'm publicly saying this that uh, Shark Tank, because of all the viewers uh, writing in, Shark Tank is moving back to Friday night because everybody was saying, Yay. "Oh, you're on Sunday, and I can't watch it with my kids, so we got to get up for work, or I can't DVR, so we are moving back to Friday night, starting uh, February 28th, I think it is. So, oh. thank you for your support as always. Oh, oh good, fantastic. good. Well, congratulations. We'll be watching. Yes, congratulations. And I think you're into, what season are you into now? My goodness. We are into season 11. Oh. A little over a decade oh. of uh, helping people making dreams and a little yeah. over a decade of unfortunately me sitting next to Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> well, we always say, the, we think the what the world needs now more than anything is more entrepreneurs and people taking control of their own financial lives. And you're, you're, you're right. You're right there. So we so appreciate you, Damon. Absolutely. Thank you so much for educating people. Thank you. Keep Thank up you. The good work. All right. Have look for the book work. Power Shift. Okay. When we come back, right, we've been going into um, those three characters that raise money and tell you why we say yes and why we some people say no. Because if you can't raise capital, you, you can't be an entrepreneur. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Robert Kiyosaki, the Rich Dad Radio Show, the good news and bad news about money. Once again, listen to the Rich Dad Radio program anytime, anywhere on iTunes, Android, and YouTube, and please leave a review whenever you listen. We'd love to hear from you. The most important part is all of our programs are archived at richdadradio.com. Once again, richdadradio.com. We archive that so you can listen to this again. This is a very important show. It's about how to raise capital or how not to lose capital when people borrow money from you. A lot of that going on. And it's good for your friends, family, especially business associates, because everybody's looking for capital, especially today. And the irony of it is there's so much capital out there and people can't get any. It's just ridiculous. So I want to thank uh, Damon John. His latest book is called Power Shift. Shift Power Shift. Do uh, March 10th. This is uh, January. This is February 2020. So it's the date in there. But anyway, it's a very important book if you're going to be an entrepreneur. And if you don't want to read, then don't be an entrepreneur because you're probably not going to make it because we study constantly. Right, Kim? Yeah, and actually I listened to an interview that Damon John did and he was talking about the multimillionaires and billionaires and things they have in common. And he said the first thing he said, the number one thing is they always try to educate themselves. They're always learning, always wanting to get big, better, get stronger, always. And that's their number one thing. Yeah, Mark Cuban is a voracious reader. He yeah. comes across as a of a big jock, but boy, that guy's a smart dude. Smart, yeah. So anyway, uh, going back into the most important subject for any entrepreneur to learn or a skill set is called how to raise capital. And I said there was three characters and I'm asked constantly. It was last week was a mother, a friend who's a, she says, my son, da, 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 da. And he needs to So with, without her, I would never have talked to the kid. And he wanted 350,000. And I said, why? And he says, cause I'm about to lose my job. And I said, well, that's not a good reason. But I get a lot of that stuff. Another one is a friend who needs 400K because the bank changed the, changed the deal on him. So it's called an interim loan. But with him, we're going to go probably longer into a million dollar capital raise with him. And that doesn't take any time to say yes to him. And the third guy is Kenny McElroy, our real estate partner. And we have like a standing order, you know. Kenny, we got 250000 all the time for you. Just take it, right, Kim? Yeah, and you know the second and the second guy you're talking about, he has such a, a strong track record, and he's been very, very successful. He and his his wife have run this company for many, many years. They've Twenty been, years have been friends. Yeah, they've grown it. They we've seen the ups and downs, but they just have done such a great job, and they have such a vast amount of knowledge and experience. And so I wouldn't hesitate at all. I wouldn't yeah. hesitate. So and and that's really what it takes because I have found Kim and I have found that. Um, a small business owner is the biggest problem and the, the biggest pain in the neck because they don't know anything. You know, they're a small entrepreneur. They run something like this. They don't know anything. And I've, it's cost me more time than money trying to educate people who don't know anything. And then they don't want to get educated. So that those are some of the hot points when I look, look at it, when I talk to a person I said, what's the last book you read? What have you done this? And I need the money, man. You have the money. Give me the money. Well, I love what Damon, I mean, Damon said it in the show. I, I think this is the number one thing. And he said, you know, you get all these do, doing your due diligence and learning about, you know, what they know and what they don't know. But he said, but sometimes I just don't like them. 
I don't want to do business with them. And I think today, number one in my book is, is the character of the individual. What's the character? Yeah, and uh, with me, if they're not studying, I'm out. And if they're a small business person, they're biggest, the biggest pain in the butts I've ever run across. And I'm doing my best to educate them, and all they want is the effing money. Yeah. Well, just, yeah. you just give me the money. I said, what? Give me the money, because they're so desperate. You know, that and then, was... And then we have our buddy Frank, right? Oh, Frank's great. Yes. Frank is the best man. This guy has taken so many companies public. Kim and I took three companies public. When you take a company public, you're in the stock market raising public capital. That's what it means. It's the most success, it's the most sophisticated, well, one of the most sophisticated capital raises there is because you have to go into the exchanges and you have to prove to them that you know what you're doing. We have to have all the documentation, all that. So you know, when we dealt with Frank for so many years and I would watch him, like I watched Kenny, the guy we have a deal with, Kenny pitched him a deal with less than a minute, Frank says, I'm in. That's how fast they can make the decision. He was the best teacher we had, wasn't he, he was a, He was a fantastic teacher. And, you know, just back to Damon again, he, he said one other thing he said about these successful multimillionaire billionaires, um, one is they, they are voracious learners. Number two is they make a ton of mistakes. So to Frank... We did a. We started a mining company that was a mining company in Peru, and they made mistake after mistake, mistake, mistake. They learned, learned, learned until it turned up to be a mining company in China. <laughs> but they yeah, had to go through the, that was a mistake too. But they had to go through the process and make all the mistakes and go through all the learning. Um, and what they found was a fantastic find. It was just politics. So the thing about the Chinese deal, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, Bitcoin is the China has probably come out with a back gold back crypto. So some of that gold comes from our gold mine that they, they, they took away from us. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know? <probably> true. <laughs> and I was just in China. They, they uh, rejected my book fake because I mentioned that deal in China. Oh, you know, that, you know, people say, well, communism is a good thing or socialism. I don't know about that, man. Those guys are tight. They're really, really tight. Like, you know, they arrest you if you're not wearing a face mask because of this, what is some kind of virus going around or, you know, I mean, what the heck's wrong with these guys? But anyway, we learn a lot. So Sarah, Sarah, I want to talk to you. So Sarah is our producer. Got a great job. She got Damon on the show. <laughs> what have you learned listening to this program today? Um, the biggest thing I think <clears throat> is, I think Kim mentioned it at the top of the show, that if you don't change yourself you don't look inside and start making changes with how you address relationships or how you influence people, um, build your own brand, then you're never going to be successful. Um, you can't expect the outside to change Correct. for you. That's the biggest reason. And then because it's not, anyway, that's a very important, I, I'm, I'm just cannot believe what people do for money. Anyway, they steal a lot of money. My, my first deal was a wallet business. We took off. Our problem was we're so successful, I had to keep raising money, and we kept raising money. And so what happened was our debt level kept increasing, and cash flow was late, wasn't coming in fast enough. So I went and raised the last, the last $100. I asked my, C, my CFO, Stanley. I said, Stanley, how much more do we need? He says, 100000 So I raised 100000 because Stanley couldn't raise any money. I said, will this save... Will this save, you know, will this save us? He goes, yeah. So I turned the check over to Stanley and he ran off with it. So ladies and gentlemen, that's why if you can't change yourself, you can't handle that kind of treasonous and all that, you know, stuff. You really should not be an entrepreneur raising capital. It's a very tough chain, tough road. So anyway, please let's just get Damon's book, Power Shift and become a student and you have a better chance of raising capital. Final words, Kim? Well, final words is, as I said earlier, that if there is ever a shortcut to entrepreneurship, it's to find great mentors and real teachers. And Damon is a, a, a great mentor and a real teacher. So I would learn from him, That's study his point. books. He's got, he's got several books and he is a smart, smart, smart entrepreneur. That's a good point. Cause if I was, if I went on to Shark Tank, I would only, I don't care how much money I got it cause who's gonna be my partner, yeah. which, which of the sharks would be my mentor. That would be what I'm looking for. And these guys are trying to, they want the money, but not the mentor. That's really, really stupid. Anyway, once again, thanks for, thanks to Damon John. His book is called Power Shift. And thank you all for listening to the Rich Dad Radio Show.